I didn't finish off the last video um, as I'd wanted to because I had to quickly uh, uh, stop uh, recording. Uh, I'm just going to complete that idea and also make some small notes uh, about the other things that I brought up because there were certain things which I think I could have pointed out as well, which is, but just at the end there where I'm talking about the, the, um, the, the statistical pressure applied to things in order to simplify the narrative within this orthodoxy of everyone is an entity representative of their of, of of the only entities that matter which are these completely amalgamated entities of of racial uh culture uh you know um so, so they they are the there's only one face to every culture there's only one entity to, to every culture everything is reduced into this complete amalgamate in upon which you can't actually see anything deeper than that there, there's there's no depth beyond that 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 is the 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 prime you know there's just presumed that that must be everything must be reduced into um what is the experience of this one entity against another entity you can't look between those very stark and and statistically drawn lines so it's kind of like at the end of the day a reality itself is just a uh, um a collection of of uh of statistics and unless you you know like and so when you come against this statistical argument it's like you can't argue particulars you can't say no some people did this you 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 can say no 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 but that's completely just drowned out when you generalize the experience of of the one group against the other group and I mean, you, you see the problem with this, the, the kind of uh, the dehumanization in this and, and how it's therefore impossible to actually have a discussion between groups at all, because it just kind of gets reduced to the, some kind of functional element of how the one entity has treated the other entity. And both of these entities are are statistical amalgamates. Of, of a, so there's this generalizable experience that everything must be oversimplified into and you and they won't get away from that you can't dissuade them from that because if you give any example they'll just say no 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 but you, we have to look at the overarching statistical thrust so i'm allowed to ignore what you're saying i'm allowed to, you know because i it, you have to crunch the numbers and get it down to one indicator good or bad basically so the and so it always comes down to this oversimplified binary of victim uh, perpetrator you know and and there's nothing in there's nothing in their philosophy there's nothing in the just in in the uh the philosophy of 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 this definition of of social justice uh, that comes from uh, deriving it from uh uh progress by removing injustice which is which is their primary axiomatic fundamental uh you know thing which i i've I think i did a good job of actually deconstructing now, now the other things that i wanted to point out um uh i don't actually have a time stamp for it, but uh well when i was t uh, talking at um at the 13 minute and 20 second mark uh, and i was talking about um And I, I don't actually remember what I was talking about, but my, the notes that I have here, which, which is, I just wanted to connect it, what I was saying at that timestamp mark. I just wanted to connect that with the idea that there is a problem with in, in the moral, there is a certain problem in this moral framework. Okay, and, and now I remember actually, it, it was, was to do with the, the white liberals who can't actually find a place within this philosophical um framework where they will inevitably kind of become ethno-fascist because they they won't drop the framework but they won't be able to contend it on the highfalutin level of the ivory tower level of the rainbow hitler okay so because they can't do that and they won't give up the framework then they'll just fudge it to the level of being ethno-nationalist but anyway that whole paradigm right um the, this because let's just say even if politically identity politics might not be pervasively popular, it does control the culture to some extent. And, uh, and this has to do with 
I'm not going to go too much into it, uh, personality style or whatever. So, I mean, I would say, generally speaking, you never get more than 20% of a, of a population who will ever actually believe in identity politics. But it doesn't mean that that 20%, if properly mobilized, can't control culture. And right now they, they do basically control culture. They, it's in the ethos. It's kind of like it's, it, it has prominence within, uh, you know, if you look at philosophies as kind of like um, – powerhouses or, or or whatever they, they kind of they they control the framework as it were um of cultural value even as it stands and i just wanted to connect this and i'm not going to draw it out fully perhaps i'm of being too rough and sketching this out but i wanted to point out that there is a connection between the the preeminence of of the the moral framework that identity politics provides and school shootings these things are are linked um pervasively because it just it is such a, a corrupting uh, uh moral influence you know it, it kind of you it, it it is um closely connected with how individuals can relate to their groups and how they can kind of you know so it, it is kind of founded in a kind of group think so identity politics promulgates a kind of group, an operative group think that people should have pride in and, and such. Uh, but obviously with also within identity politics, it doesn't do that well um, for, for uh, white liberals, uh, as I said. But, um, and then there's, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not saying that the school shooters are, are, um, are troubled white liberals. Um, I don't think that's, that, that's, that's, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, that's not my claim, but it's this is kind of like an in-between claim there, which I don't know if I want to describe too too much. But um, uh, because yeah, okay, but it has to do with personality style. But I'll just say that they're, they're um, because this uh, identity politics is right now in force as the only kind of way to conceive of belonging to. Uh, um, or having a certain relationship to collective groups, um, which for some personality styles, it's a very important feature of their ego um, in terms of how they see themselves in relating to society at large and to other groups and, and things like that. And because this is, let's say, the only version of, of group identity uh, and and morality that's that's connected to an understanding of group identity that is in force... Um, I would say some personalities, uh, they don't have, uh, it, 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 it just is so incompatible with their, um, their style of personality that they can't interface through the matrix of identity politics. Like it, it's just, it's anathema to them as personality styles. So because they just can't find a way to connect, uh, their individual psychology with these current cultural value you know forces or whatever um yeah i this is a quite a broad point but i just want to basically if if identity politics did not exist i am sure there would be no school shootings i mean um okay well okay the, the, that's a bit um, pie in the sky perhaps but um if we were living in the culture that was still prevalent in the 90s uh, if we had non-racialism and non-sexism as the kind of the, the staple uh, um, uh, moral default instead of identity politics we wouldn't have the kind of of self uh, uh, immolation that, 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 that is this weird kind of hypocrisy that's built into the philosophy and the moral framework of identity politics. So because that is seen as, as the only, yeah, because I mean, personality styles, a lot of them, they're, they're not, you know, they, they look at, they don't have to adopt cultural values for them to kind of internalize them and play with them. And kind of, I mean, because there are a lot of people that are almost, um, some personality styles much more than others, um, that they, they effectively, they only see themselves as political entities on some level. And some people only see themselves as group entities. And it's those people who only see themselves as group entities within their personality style. Um, they're the ones who 
can't live in the cesspool of 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 moral degradation which identity politics symbolizes um perhaps because on some level it's very similar to how their personality style um interpolates the world and so because of that kind of parity uh, they're kind of confronted with it on a very visceral level and um you know they're forced to kind of develop their false ego faster than than would otherwise be naturally so because they've got a model of their false ego um instantiated in the culture at at, at such a uh, developed level and so then you know they can kind of uh yeah so i mean the, the, there are lots of of uh things happening here um uh okay well, actually the last example that i gave is probably more so of the people who actually go into it and and pick it up with both hands and kind of relish the identity politics and they you know they're kind of like the queen activists or, or whatever or the ones that because they just kind of see it as an extension of their power because that's how they organize or that's how they wish to organize their, their social groups, you know, and kind of uh, police them and, and by marshalling them against the others who don't conform to their in-group morality, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's very vicious. But um, uh Yeah, and then there was just an earlier point which um, uh, which happened uh, much in in the first quarter of of the video, I think, um, or or the first third when I was talking about things which I I thought that would have been a better point to uh, if I had used the word statistics that um, is that uh, because. Th there, there needs to be um, the only way to kind of defend yourself against identity politics is to offer a critique against using statistics. That statistics themselves are essentially useless because they only use statistics because the idea is that when you reduce life to the outcome of of a statistical representation, uh, which is the measure of the outcome, it's it's what it, it's just the, there are as many outcomes as there are different statistical um, brackets, you know, so it's just that those things are equivalent, that those are the entities and those are the entities outcomes, like that those, those are the, the things that you need to track. And they are not the things you need to track because you can't, there's no explanation that the, the statistic does not represent an explanation of anything. Um, uh, and this kind of correlation between the statistic and some kind of moral uh, uh, judgment on what is happening and why it's happening is is just, uh, I mean, it, it is absurd. Uh, it is just as absurd as using statistical arguments to get around any kind of substantive issue, you know, like, and so you can just ignore the substantive issue and you can just kind of demand some kind of redistribution or some kind of a corrective outcome. And when you do that, you don't know how anything works. You don't, you, you, you're not curious or you don't investigate how the things that do work actually end up, you know, working. And so you can promote those things. You don't end up promoting the solution. You end up supposedly attacking the supposed problem, which is, philosophically it's 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 ill conceived it it is a it is a brute kind of shortcut which leads you basically to having to find something to vilify because it has so many philosophical problems and hypocrisy built into it that you have to basically make a scapegoat at some point so yeah i mean there's no way around it it does just lead you towards uh some kind of uh, uh scenario in in uh the Weimar Republic, you know, it, it, I mean, this is, uh, this is perhaps more obvious to me because I live in South Africa, and and this is literally what 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 is what it's being used for, and and this is what's happening. Um, so I can kind of see more of the future, and I guess ideologically, America's probably at less risk of of this stuff sort of happening because they don't have uh, a majority in their country who um 
need liberation in the sense of of the liberation that that identity politics defines, which is you know it's it's just it it's deception. And the worst thing is is that it's it is a huge diversion to actually discussing anything of meaning. It it is it is like at its core, it's apolitical. It it disempowers people on a political level. It kind of, and and politicians especially suffer from this because and you can see this I think uh, or just because this is what I see on the news, but you can see this especially in British politics is that there is no way to translate this identity politics pile of shit into any kind of workable policy. It just doesn't translate. It it isn't operative. And for the reasons that, that, that I laid out in my earlier video, it, and and when politicians try to do it, they end up looking stupid. They end up looking facile, you know, and and this is highly problematic because the the philosophy is set up basically to destabilize democracy. It's set up to destroy institutional integrity, to kind of undercut it until it just eventually. <clears throat> Uh, falls to some kind of paternal author authoritarian that, that that promises to to offer the salvation of justice dispensed to the identity, you know, um, which you know usually becomes a kind of wolf tribe state, um, and which people are you know like they are they are, the the rhetoric is manufactured to pander to them as their kind of their breed, you know, it really does turn people into dogs. And uh, I've I've made uh, there's a much earlier video that, where I talk about the Napoleonic legal system, um, and that I do think it's it's easier to get people into this corner when they're coming from uh, what I would call. Uh, a monkey mentality of Napoleonic law, because when you're treated as a subject within a Napoleonic legal framework, which usually the Parliament's role to to um, Parliament's role in the legal system is generally um, is generally that in that style of Napoleonic uh, system. But at least in South Africa, we have a really good substantive legal system. Um, and we have a constitution as well, which I would say um, uh, gives us a lot of protection against that Napoleonic influence. But, I mean, if we already had a completely Napoleonic uh, uh, legal framework in this in South Africa, I think we would already have an ethno-nationalist government. I, I think it's, it's the concept of justice uh, th that has been the bulwark against this kind of philosophical, ill-conceived, uh, uh, you know, like removing social injustice is is the uh, uh, the path to progress or whatever, because it it you know it that has it requires you to be a racist to do that. It it, it you 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 have to be a racist in order to even pursue that. Um, you know, you you have to be deeply racialist in in how you. Um, I, it's just so poisonous on, on so many intellectual... I mean, it can't help but turn people into... Uh... Okay, so, yeah, so this basic point, and I know it, it, it's a bit of a caricature, but I think it... Because you can, you can imagine this in Europe. I mean, you can imagine that coming from a Napoleonic legal framework where you've got people that already kind of are monkey see, monkey do. They follow what their parliament tells them to do. Um they don't have this internal sense of justice, uh, which they are the moral, um, uh, dis, you know, like, like which they are the vanguard of, as it were, because when they go into their court cases, their decision-making processes are what is judged and what is developing the law um, on a case-by-case -case basis. When you just have a, a purely kind of ed 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 edictorial system where the law is coming from down from your elected representatives, when it's not made from the morality of the people that lives in the people, then already it's easier, I would say, to turn monkeys into the fascist dogs, which, you know, um, you know, because there is no philosophical resistance against uh, uh, th this idea that you can remove evil, um, you know, through, through some kind of... Uh, by removing the injustice rather than promoting justice. So the idea that you know th they define the promotion of justice as the removal of injustice and that is just such a gr 
a groundless kind of weird table thumping thing that uh, okay, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to relate that to, to the mere concept that law only comes from the top down. So if you think that law only comes from the top down, it's very easy to jump from that into the kind of philosophical hot water of just kind of hysterically running around after some kind of negative measure that forces you to create a whole philosophical knock-on effect of, of believing all this racialist nonsense. And then you're, you're practically one step away uh, from, uh, from falling victim to, to, to the ethno-fascists because they do eventually beat you down. They, they basically say, no, no, you're just a monkey. You're, look, you, you know you're just a monkey. So now give up and it, just accept being a dog because then at least you're, you live in a pack. So join your pack and be, belong to your pack. It's, it's easier than being a monkey. So... That's, you know, uh, at least we have uh, in, in South Africa, uh, I would say the only people who are falling for it are the people who have personality styles that are inclined towards thinking that way um, in terms of group. Because there are, there's just 20% of every population has a kind of uh, personality style that is inclined towards thinking, uh, uh, you know, in terms of, of statistical entities that that you know like you know the, 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 you know there there are some people almost who have to think of the world in terms of us and them because that is how they operate within their in group is is by policing against the morality of their out group you know and and so because they can't actually defend it on an intellectual level they have to make it an us or them claim and so these are the people that have kind of uh that relish identity politics because it, it, it is literally how they think of the world. But I mean, you know, you never want to have any person like this in charge of anything um, because they are so uh, stultifying, you know, like they are not problem solvers. They are incapable of, of doing so much uh, and, and their incapacity is always the problem from the out group is always the, oh, they did it to us, you know, so they, they always export their weaknesses and their inability to be self-critical. They always make it, uh, oh, no, we're being, uh, adver you know, it, it's the, it's paranoia, basically. They, they use paranoia to, to solidify and concretize their in-group. And it gets more and more stupid, the more paranoia gets built into the ideological thing. You, you can't have these people in any form of leadership. You can't have them in as teachers. You can't have them as journalists. You have to kind of find something for them to do, which is hopefully technical and, and kind of doesn't, I mean, generally they're very taxing people to be around. They're the sort of people who will um, always have drama you know, they, they'll always be complaining about someone that has victimized something about them so that they can kind of force other people to rise up against them. You know, they're kind of like the, you know, they're always in the middle of some kind of witch hunt. I mean, they need it to operate because because that's what they are in a sense. Um, uh, yeah. And so these people are, you know, generally, I mean, I'm talking now from a psychological and a personality point of view these people are very toxic and you i mean you need you need a culture that actually identifies them and treats them obviously not in an undignified way but doesn't fall victim to them because if you have a culture that falls victim to them they never let you go you know it, it's very i mean you can see this operative in many many subcultures and you know like uh, um Thomas Sowell has a thing about talking about the the, the kind of the, the very bad culture in, in the South. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but that kind of the Cajun thing or whatever, you know, the kind of the, the hillbilly thing. And it's like black people trying to cling to ebonics or whatever uh, as that this is their distinct racial beingness. No, that's just another form of that hillbilly. Uh, you know, it's just that Southern culture, which is by itself that is what is causing the problem, you know, like it's, it's a bad culture and you need to be able to criticize culture instead of having some kind of identity politics that, that, that puts the sensitivity things over things and you can never fix anything. You can never have an honest discussion about anything because it's too racially sensitive, you know, and then it just kind of feeds into, uh, uh, you know, there's this wonderful Jungian phrase that what you resist persists.
And identity politics is literally the engine of fascism for that very same reason. It, it's just so disgusting. Um, okay, well, I've expanded on a lot of things, so I'm going to stop.